Welcome, everyone, to another episode of the Adeptus Ridiculous Podcast. My name is DK Diamantes. My co-host is Bricky. Today is a super special episode, but before we get into that, uh, if you enjoyed today's podcast, head over to patreon.com slash Adeptus Ridiculous, where you can support us. Uh, there's a new poster. Uh, there's uh, Discord. A uh, bunch of really cool stuff. Patreon.com slash Adeptus Ridiculous. Bricky, tell them stuff. Yes, good job, very quick. All right, everyone, we have a very special advertiser for you. Roll the clip, Shy. This video of Adeptus Ridiculous is sponsored by Nacon. In particular, Warhammer 40,000, the Inquisitor Martyr game, now available on console. The Inquisitor Martyr game allows you to explore the Caligari sector and purge all of the chaos scum within, either by yourself or with up to four players as an action RPG style game. It also has local co-op on the console versions, which is Kind of a rarity nowadays and nice to see. And this Ultimate Edition is everything that it has. Four years of updates, over 25 pieces of DLC. It has native 4K support, higher resolution textures, cross-gen multiplayer, as well as an upgrade path for owners of the previous console editions. There are multiple classes, multiple types of gear, specializations, etc., etc. Warhammer 40K Inquisitor Martyr Ultimate Edition is now available on PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. X plus S, and you can check out the game by clicking on the link in the video description. Thank you very much for sponsoring this video, and let's get on with our topic. Thanks, Shy. You definitely rolled that whole clip, and we sat there and listened the whole time. Wow, well um, done, Shy. Really well done, Shy. It. Well done. Um, yes, and uh, and also like you know, our next book club is uh, is Bloodlines. Read that. Um, it's, even though we already rolled an ad, just to mention, we do the new poster of our, of course we did a short stack, fucking uh, short yep, stack. Yep, 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 yep. Uh -huh. to, um, it is for sale on the merch site as well, down at orchidate.com. Check out in the description. I don't want to talk too much about it because we had an ad this episode. Yep, but it is for sale if you want to grab it. Cool. Okay. So that's that's the opening. So, Chai's Poison failed. Yeah, it sure did. She didn't she didn't manage to completely get us. Nope, I'm still uh you know, I got my I got so for those of you out of the loop, me and DK just so happened to wake up with varying types of illnesses on the same day. Mhm. Mm we did. You uh did you did you know what happened to you? Did you just have some nausea or? Yeah, I just had some nausea, wasn't really quite feeling right and uh yeah. Yeah, I I got a sinus infection. Same day. So Shy's trying to do something. Shy's Shai's trying to get us Shai's, out of here. Shy's up to something. Shy's up to something. And she's, she obviously, her hitman is obviously like, she, she must be spending too much money on, on orc models because she didn't save enough finances to hire a good hitman who could really <laughs> deal with us. Yep, amateur, amateur. Amateur hour. Amateur hour, Shy. Jesus. God damn. Anyway, today is a special episode of Adeptus Ridiculous, something that we reached because of our excellent Patreon goal. Thank you all so much. We uh, originally start with this, then we add the Blood Angels. Mm -hmm. Blood Angels sealed the deal because it was the Blangles. And now we are talking about a fan theory. The, uh, the Dornian Heresy, a, a classic case of what would it be like if the traitors were loyalists still and the loyalists were traitors. Ooh. We've we've gotten that we've this has been heavily requested. So I'm kind yeah, of excited yeah. to see how this goes and how the uh how how the role reversal actually plays out. According to a fan theory, because this isn't canon. This isn't something that actually uh, exists in the canon of 40k. This is all just like fan fiction, right? Yeah, this is all just a uh, yeah, a, a fan theory written up. None of this is canon. It's just an idea. Um, you know, I, I'm always very skeptical when it comes to fan stuff uh, yeah. because a lot of the times fan theory stuff likes to kind of jerk themselves off a lot. Yeah, um, they like to play up the uh, the the favorites, you know, and they you know. Yeah, tend to, the, tend to be a little too ship happy or something, or a little more unrealistic than maybe you'd like, and yeah. Which is an ironic thing to state, because saying that things are unrealistic in in the world of 40k is uh, that's a whole that's a whole can of worms. But 
<laughs> yeah, like whenever you, there's always the joke that whenever someone creates their own Space Marine Legion, they make lore for them and they're like, they've never lost a single battle. They're yeah. secretive and they, no one knows they exist. And they're that's, so dark and edgy and unbeatable and unattainably awesome and hua. It, it's all very, very old school, like playground kind of stuff. Yeah, 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 um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But. For this one in particular, it's actually not too bad. Um, okay. they, there's some work put in here. There's some genuine thought processes and some good effort went into finding a good reason why some would be traitors, some would stay loyal or stay loyalists and the vice versa. Some are not as good as others, but you know, as far as fan theories go, it's not bad. Good. So I'm glad to hear it. I'm, I'm excited then. So most of the Dornian heresy maintains its canon style. Uh, a lot of the, the same events will unfold, but they will have a slight twist to them that will allow it to make, uh, add to different kinds of routes. So the first one was the Council of Nakia, which is something that, you know, I don't think we talked much about, but it's basically the emperor being like, psychers, cringe. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. When I uh, when I was really into Thousand Sons, I vaguely remember that. And Magnus was like, "What do you mean, psychers are cringe? Like, come on, Dad. This is this is a resource that we could very easily use to help us." And he's like, "No, stop it. It's bad." Y yep, that's basically what it was. He he just kind of dunked on Magnus and was like, "No, your your powers are stupid. Shut up." Despite him himself being like the most powerful psyker in the universe, but yeah, yeah, we'll we'll get to that. Um, instead, this time around, the decision was changed. Um, this is the, the, probably the major difference that changed the entirety of the, uh, of the events overall is that instead of just, you know, three pointing on Magnus, he basically decided, yeah, um, you, that makes a lot of sense. Like, okay, you know, you can do your sorcery stuff and that's fine be careful and all that stuff like be, be ooh. but he he decided like all right yeah this time around he actually went along the lines of being like okay sure well, well you can kind of do your thing a bit yeah. more um oh, so so he so he tells magnus it's okay to to be a psyker and do psychic stuff and and all that he he says like definitely at least for magnus yeah magnus okay. can kind of go ahead and do his own thing and be a little bit more still be cautious be careful be anything but like you can you can practice your your path so to speak yeah okay so, so everything else from there kind of goes on the same um horus was still stabbed uh by poison infected nurgle ship on hmm. gavin but this time he didn't entirely rely on erebus to oh. do his ritual to heal him because magnus actually was able to get there and use his psychic powers to excise the, uh, the the rot, gross Nurgle oh. power inside of him, so Chaos could not get his grip on Horus. Gotcha. So Erebus truly did get fucked this time. There's like, there's an image of all the Primarchs reversed, and oh here it is. And I think Erebus is like dead. Yeah, there it is. Um. Here is the oh image. Oh boy, Erebus dead. I like it. Erebus, if you look on the left-hand side, the ecclesiarchy looking dude is actually Lorgar, and I believe he has Erebus as a flaming effigy on, oh. on his staff. Oh, nice. Which is a little... Glad uh, to hear it. Glad to hear that Erebus is dead. Love it. Lo love it. The best you possible love to thing. hear it. Yeah, the best possible ending is Erebus getting absolutely owned. Also, but I mean, like, at the same time, look at that fucking, look at that goddamn um, uh, Perturabo in the back. That guy is is a is a whole bunch of beef. Wow. Yeah, that is <laughs> that is a stocky beefcake. Yeah. Looks like an Damn. armored core guy. <laughs> Metal Gear Rising. Jesus. <laughs> um. So, uh, with the excise of the rotter or Nurgle infection of Horus. Horus does not fall to chaos, and chaos gets pretty goddamn pissed off about this. Yeah, I'm sure uh, they do, because they don't really have a foothold anymore. So instead, what happens is naturally they go after Dorn. Um, but in ah. between this uh, this back and forth, Gilliman actually does a very interesting thing where he 
declares independence from the Imperium. Wow, Gilliman and, does? Yep, Gilliman just takes his entirety of Ultramar and says, I'm leaving. Huh. He doesn't necessarily okay. join Traitor, so to speak. He just becomes his own sort of independent faction? They succeeded from the Imperium uh, alongside most of Ultima Segmentum and made their own, like, yeah, I don't want to be part of the Imperium, but I'm not going to join Chaos either. I'm I'm leaving, which is a pretty Gilliman thing to do, if I'm being totally honest. Yeah, I, I guess so. As far as things that Gilliman would actually, would actually do, like him just leaving and being like, this, being in part of the Imperium, this is not logistically feasible. I am going to do my own thing with my own laws and my own taxes. Oh, Gilliman. Oh, Gilly. Or, oh, or, Gwilliman. Oh, gor Gorilla. Oh, gorilla real man. So, uh, he succeeds, and in response to this, Rogel Dorm took command of most of the legions to go deal with Gilliman. Mm -hmm. Deal with him as a problem, as if he was a traitor. Which, I guess, in terms of Imperium, he kind of is, but, you know, he's, he's not, he's not like a heretic. He's yeah. a traitor, but not a heretic. Yeah. So to speak. Um, but he led a bunch of legions over there. He had the Salamanders, the Iron Hands, the Dark Angels, Imperial Fists, and then the Emperor's Children, Raven Guard, and World Eaters all went over there to go fight Gilliman. And when they all landed to go do the big war, big bloody bath war against Gilliman, this was actually the new Istvan V massacre. And instead, the Salamanders, Iron Hands, Imperial Fists, and Dark Angels turned on the World Eaters, Emperor's Children, and I think the Raven Guard, which is okay. bizarre because the Raven Guard end up becoming traitor anyway. Huh. So it's just a complete role reversal. Somewhat. I mean, the Obviously. Raven Guard are loyalists now, yeah. but they they got they got turned on by the tra by the new traitors. Yet they became traitor. I think they sold themselves some, themselves to Zinch. In like a uh, Magnus style thing where they had no choice. Oh, uh, okay. So I, th I think that's maybe the reason why. But yeah, so it, the war reversal was there. I think that Angron actually dies here. Oh no! Yeah, well, maybe he likes that. Maybe he likes glowing, going out in like glorious combat. So maybe maybe well, that's the best case scenario for him. Well, not quite. So Angron's lore is a bit different. Instead uh -oh. of getting the butcher's nails, he got like an aggression chip put in his head. It's a lot less powerful and annoying. Oh. But after he turned his guys onto the guards, all of his gladiators just started running out and murdering civilians. And he was like, wow, that's bad. I don't like this. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 not good. And in, instead of Big E just teleporting him back to the flagship, Big E actually had Horus with him. And Horus was like, hey, maybe don't. Teleport him alone. He'll probably hate you. That's probably a bad idea. Maybe we should all just go down there and help him. And Biggie was like, you know, you know, favorite son. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. And so they help him instead of just watching his oh, his friends and okay. family die. So Angron gets kind of the good. Uh, he gets he gets dad's help. Dad comes down to help him with Gilliman, surprisingly, and and everything is great with them. Angron is takes the place of Ferris Manus in here, where I believe he goes in mega berserk mode to let all of his sons escape the the betrayal, but I believe dies in the process. Oh, um, okay. So it's kind with, of an honorable ending. A little bit, yeah, yeah. But I mean, you know, he was still betrayed and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sucks, um, but yeah. Yeah, sucks, but it do be what it is. At least his home to, his home world is still alive, I guess. Or well I think I guess that doesn't matter. I don't he know, saved no. his brothers, whatever. He he saved he saved his sons, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's or on the other side of it. Oh yeah, I guess this kind of adds to this because I was talking about uh, how Lehman Russ and Magnus kind of did like, unlike the Prospero one, the Raven Guard kind of got stuck into the whole Zinchian vibe and all that. Mm -hmm. Well, the actual Lehman Russ himself was none too pleased with the council of nakia's new verdict yeah, he he saw <laughs> yeah he saw big e to be like what a traitorous act to allow these witches to be yeah. among us because you know lehman, lehman russ, russ. think that yeah because lehman russ is lehman russ mm -hmm. um so actually the burning of prospero still happened uh oh. 
The difference is that they did it because fuck you, Magnus. And ah, not your because so the Emperor told them to. Yeah, and, and Horus didn't intercept it or anything. It mm -hmm. was literally just, damn, Magnus's foul sorcery is going to betray the Emperor one day. So they did uh... it out of a loyalist ideal, mm -hmm. but it ended up turning them later on, and we'll talk about that later. Yeah. But but Magnus had Magnus never actually had to do the uh, warp to the Emperor and uh, destroy the Webway thing. Yes, he never he never did the cool he never did a uh, Kool Aid Man into the Imperial Palace yeah, and was like, never, Dad, he, watch out. Yeah, he never did the big fucky wucky. Where, yeah. Whoops. Sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. I did something wrong. It would appear. Yeah. Um, but so the reason why Dorne was actually the new Chaos Undivided champion is because basically a combination of, of multiple factors, but he was pissed at being sent back to Terra because when everyone else was going around doing glorious battle stuff, mm -hmm. he hated Percherabo. Naturally. Which, you know, some things never change, you know? Yeah, some things just stay the same. Uh, and Horus getting Warmaster also annoyed him majorly, which is why he started going more and more to his little pain glove uh -huh. as a way to you know, cope and seethe, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Um, which slowly kind of weakened his mind a, little, mind a little bit, allowing Chaos to worm uh -huh. their way into him. So Chaos got to him because he was too reliant on the magic pain glove and it weakened his mind and he, and he just kind of flipped out and went to Chaos. No, they chose him as their new major traitorous, arch traitor of Chaos Undivided, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that was kind of the main way he went to traitor before they sent and did this big old massacre. Okay. So, of course, normal, naturally they go, you know, they go to Terra, they have this giant old fight at the gates of Terra, but uh, for the, the roles all being reversed, there was some bizarre, bizarre stuff. So the space wolves were quote unquote, baptized in the blood of the thousand suns, which oh. actually made them succumb to corn. So our new oh. corn legion are the space wolves. That makes sense. And here's a little bit of a fan art of that. That they, wow, uh, that's throw... really cool. Yeah, you get a, you get a pretty good little Lehman Russ go full on demonic wolf form, which uh, you know I, I kind of thought they would go Blood Angels with that one, but they didn't. They chose the Space Wolves, but mm -hmm. you know the murder of the Thousand Suns makes sense. Yep, I, I tell you, if if that was an actual Chaos faction, I think I'd be on board with the Space Wolves because that's really dope. DK being on board with the space, space wolves? wolves no way no fucking way and yes while, way man while these slaughtered and murdered thousand sons are all over the ground oh my god i just i just realized he even has a tail does it oh yeah he does yep oh that's dear that's just really cool like that sort of demonic wolf vibe is really really nice it does look it does look pretty pretty neat though mm -hmm. I like, um, I like it a lot. So that's how the Space Wolves went down. The Blood Angels actually were tricked as their genetic flaw had them drinking the blood of these Nurgly infected people. Oh. And they had a, actually a, a pretty similar fall to the Death Guard where they kind of got tricked and they had their Legion succumb instead as opposed because, you know, Typhus was a douchey was a complete douchebag. And so the Blood Angels actually became the new Nurgle faction. Oh, the Blood Angels became Nurgle? Yeah, Sanguinius had this like, this like pus ridden wings and stuff and all these like gross distended oh. bulbous stuff. Yeah, the Blood Angels, they, they were drinking uh, infected blood basically. Uh, I, I would not have expected the, the Blood Angels to go Nurgle. You'd think they would go corn, right? Yeah, you definitely, think, well, Maybe that's part of the reason why it's somewhat interesting. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. The perfect um, prince becomes diseased. I, you know, the, that's the polar opposite. The most beautiful, uh, the most beautiful. Of the, oh, speaking of beautiful sons, this this one's fucking hilarious to me. So Fulgrim is loyalist still, right? And, and basically what Fulgrim does is instead of going into that um, little lair and picking up that sword that has the demon in it and shit and being corrupted, 
Yeah. He just kind of destroys the place. He's like, oh God, that's horrible. Just gonna destroys <laughs> it. But ironically, Fulgrim is less likable in this world. Oh, he never had this he... like he never has like bromance with Ferris, and so he's like this immensely pretentious douche. But like oh, no. <laughs> but like worse than normal. Oh, poor guy. Poor guy. Yeah, it's he never, he never, he never gets the, you know. No. Never, yeah. Nobody ever likes him. Well, yeah. The only one person, well, I don't know if only one person ever liked him. There was the Ferris Man, his Fulgrim bromance. But well, besides true, that, yeah. it was like, Fulgrim was always a pretentious douche. But I guess he's even more unlikable, which is hilarious. He just, he can't catch a break, man. Vulcan's fall was weird. Vulcan was like, had like the Kurz treatment mm -hmm. where nobody liked him. And, and I guess he was like massively disfigured from something involving his home planet. Mm -hmm. And so just no one wanted to be around the guy. And so. Oh, poor Vulcan. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the one I kind of think is a little bit meh. Um, oh, yeah. because it's like, he just, no one wants to be around him. Also, here's another picture of, of him. And it's pretty dope, I won't lie. He's got the big dragon, the demon dragon thing. Oh, yeah, that's really dope. Whereas, um, Kurz actually kind of did the role reversal of Sanguinius. He still was sneaky terror tactics guy, but he kind of went with the idea that, yeah, my future can be changed. I can put some effort into adjusting ah. the way my future is. And so... He put his effort to saving Big E. Um, okay. So the Night Lords were one of the main defenders on Terra, as well as like some of the Iron Warriors and a few mm -hmm. others. And so the World Eaters, it was the um, the Space Wolves that were the main, or one of the main fighting forces, along with, of course, Dorne and everyone there. Mm -hmm. Is is Kurz the one that ends up dying at Big E's feet, trying to defend him? Ah, a great question. We will get there. Oh, okay. Um, the one thing that I, I gotta be honest, I'm I'm shocked they did this. They did him like this. Uh, you know, saying we just talked about this before, but Sanguinius has that big fight with uh Kalbanda, the gigantic corn demon. Mm -hmm. Well, instead of that, it's it's Percherabo. Huh. Okay. And then he fights Percherabo, and then he fucking breaks Percherabo's back, flies him into the air really high, drinks all of his blood, and oh. then chucks his corpse on the ground. And so Percherabo oh. just fucking dies. Just gets flown up in the air by Sanguinius. Gets all of his blood drank from him and gets chucked onto the ground. I'm like, oh, okay. I guess Percherabo can't get a fucking break. I guess not, but go Sanguinius. Damn. Even even in the fake lore, Percherabo gets shafted. Yep, yep. I'm okay with Sanguinius being that badass, though. I do well, like I mean, that a lot. That's even, even in the Dornian heresy, uh, Sanguinius is still best boy. I mean, he does, like, break the back of Kalbanda, fly him up in the air, and throw him back down, and then mm -hmm. rip his wings off and shit. So, I mean, it good, works. Good for you, Sanguinius. Good for you. Good job. I'm proud of you, Sanguinius. You're still crazy regardless. Hell yeah. Um, but as Dorn was fighting his way in to... There's a bit of a reverse ideology here thing, where instead of Horus having a bit of a time restraint because they, oh, the ultramarines or the dark angels are coming. They're coming. They're going to be here soon. I got to hurry up. Mm -hmm. um, instead of that, they have more of the, oh my God, the death guard. Oh, wait, no, the death guard are good. What's the death guard? I forget who. I think it, it was basically <laughs> the, um, I, I forget who, but basically it seemed as if the, um, uh, the loyalists were the ones in trouble as opposed to the traitors. Okay. Um, but Dorne, because Dorne helped create the Imperial Palace, he was actually in a way able to trap the Emperor and his custodians in his throne room, uh, which is the basically the way to make it so that instead of the Emperor being stuck on the chair to hold back the demons because of Magnus, since there was no Magnus problem, he was stuck there anyway because Dorne basically rigged the palace because Dorne built ah, the damn palace. Of course, of course, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, Who else would know how to rig it? Yeah, sure. I thought that was a pretty interesting way to keep the uh, Emperor stuck there mentality vibe, yeah. you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but uh, with that, once he actually finally made his way into the throne room, good old Emperor was gone. Uh-oh. Because sneaky boy Kurz whisked him away 
hey. through all the various uh, various parts of the palace and, and let's stuck go. them out. Let's go, Night Lords. Let's go, Kurs. What a what a good boy. He's he's been doing a good job. Also, uh, fan art version of Kurs actually does look pretty dope too. Man's got his uh, he oh, looks wow. like Night Lords all right. He doesn't look he, a whole lot different. I was gonna say he looks exactly the same. Yep, he looks. <laughs> he is a loyalist version, and he looks identical. He is the same. There's nothing different, other than maybe he's using that uh, spiked sickle thing. Yeah, which I mean, yeah, that's cool, I guess. Very cool, yeah. So, the final gambit, the classic teleport up to the vengeful spirit thing that they hit, is all about Biggie making his way up there because they're running out of time, as opposed to the opposite. Oh, okay. Because, um, you know, Horus was running out of time, and his gambit was lower my shields, let the Emperor teleport up so I can kill him, because he doesn't know. Yeah. Uh, whereas the Loyalists are the opposite. So what Conrad does is Conrad's like, I got this. Don't you worry. I have a plan. And he just leaves. <laughs> he just leaves? And he's just like, don't worry, Dad. I got this. Goodbye. I, I, I've foreseen it kind of thing. He has a very oh. similar uh, going to his demise that Sanguinius has. Ah, so he does take the place of Sanguinius. Uh, just a bit. So Just a bit. Okay, cool. He makes his way onto the Vengeful Spirit. Or, no, it's not the Vengeful Spirit. Um, it is the Phalanx. because ah, yes, it's Dorn. It's the Dornian heresy, so it would yes. be Dorn's flagship, which is a wonderful-looking flagship. A gigantic, circular cathedral of ridiculousness. <laughs> Um, yes, so it would be Doran's flagship. So uh, he does go ahead and uh, teleport onto Doran's flagship in STEM. And with that, he de deactivates the shields, therefore allowing the Emperor to make his way up. So instead of deactivating it from Doran, Kurus sneaks on, deactivates the shields, and the Emperor and Horus teleport up. Oh, okay. Um, gotcha. The thing to note before this, though, is that before they teleport up, the Emperor hooks himself up to the Astronomicon and does this gigantic, like, super mega death death punch um, <laughs> of psychic pulse. And that okay. kills a shitload of the smaller demons and, and just big old psychic pulse, basically. Like a, like a superhero landing with a big shock wave and the... Yeah, type superhero of, type landing. Of punch. Okay, cool. Uh, and so when he teleports up, he makes it to the throne room and he sees Doran surrounded by a shitload of his dead bodyguards. Oh. And he's and Doran's like, holy shit. And he's, he's backing his way back up into the pain glove. And he's like, that whatever you did down there, like, I can feel chaos is no longer in me anymore. Oh, really? That's like that's like he pulls pulled their uh pulled their grasp from my mind away. I'm trying to get into this pangolin before I hurt anyone else. Huh. So he's he is is this is this a gambit? Is he lying? Is he is he being super chaosian and just trying to lure Biggie in? And then as as Horace goes to get him, Biggie notices the uh dead corpse of Conrad underneath a bunch of rubble. Oh no, Conrad. And realizes that it's not true. It is in fact a gambit. And right mm -hmm. when they figure that out, Doran takes this giant flag staff and shanks Horus in the heart with it. Oh no, Horus. And fucking kills Horus. Oh, uh, Horus, no. So you, you can't catch a break, can you, Horus? Horus dies in both cannons, and Kurt and I guess Kurz also dies in both cannons, but oh, you yeah, not yeah. it's not just the Sanguinius up there thing, it's sing it's uh Kurz and Horus die on the flagship. Mm -hmm. Two loyalists die, yep. <laughs> So, so what happens to Big E? Oh, well, it's, it's the usual. They fight each other. Ah. They, they, you know, Rogel dies. Gotcha. So it's it's pretty much the same as if uh, Dorn had been uh, Horus. They they fight to the bitter end. Uh, Big E is left basically dead. Air quotes. Dorn definitely dead. Type of thing. Dor Dorn. Yeah. Air air quotes. I guess suppose would be the uh, yeah. Uh, would dead. be the the main thing. Severely incapacitated. I'm actually kind of impressed with the 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 writing here is not bad. So who 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 did who who started the Dornian Heresy exactly? Is it one specific author or like one specific fan that did it? 
Um, well, I, I mean, there's still a bit more left, but they oh, created oh, okay. a. It's from the Bolter and Chain Sword, I believe, presents. Um, it's like it's like a mini old school kind of uh, codex slash like index for these kinds of various groups. Um, okay. Most of them being the, being originally um, loyalists, some not. Uh, it says Aurelius Rex was the editor for this, but I don't know how much of that is fan fluff and things. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I, I gotta be honest, relearning a fan theory is fucking hard. It's like when you <laughs> you don't. It's like when you have bad technique in like a sport. Unlearning bad technique is so incredibly difficult. Oh yeah, it's it's it, it's easier to teach someone that knows nothing than to unteach bad habits and bad techniques. Yeah, it's really tough. And I'm, I'm like, okay, so th this guy's not, is he's there this time instead, and this guy's on this thing instead, but um, yeah. regardless. the most confusing thing in the world. Uh, but instead of the Khan and Dorne originally taking the Emperor back to the Astronomicum, uh, Abaddon, Loyalist Abaddon. Loyalist Abaddon. I, I, there are dude, some words I never thought I'd, is he still called Abaddon the Despoiler, or is he just... <laughs> Abaddon. No, he's not called Abaddon the Spoiler. The <laughs> the new Abaddon would be uh, Sigismund, first captain ah. of the Imperial Fists. Okay. Um, but Abaddon brought him back to the Astronomicon instead, uh, the Emperor. Mm -hmm. And Abaddon ended up changing from originally Sons of Horus instead of the Black Legion. Abaddon became the Black Templars. Oh, I guess that makes sense. It, yeah, it makes works sense. out as yeah. far as like the the pious powerful yeah. group the the counterpart group that would kind of accept anybody ish yeah yeah sure uh whereas uh sigismund renamed the imperial fists to the black legion okay which makes sense there that also makes sense sure yeah uh and as far as, as all of the the you know then of course they have the heresies over everyone segments themselves off that usual kind of stick or mm -hmm. stick but each of the factions fell in their own way like we mentioned that the blood angels fell to nurgle the space wolves fell to corn which actually makes a little more sense now that i think about it because space wolves hate psychers so much oh yeah space wolves falling to corn makes a lot of sense it's just blood angels and nurgle is just like what i That's think maybe so the strange. i think maybe the the overarching um fact that, that it's so different is one of the reasons why it yeah. works out as well as it like, does yeah i guess because that would be the 180 you know the the beautiful sons into the decayed, diseased. Yeah. Yeah. The 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 pretty perfect son kind of thing. Yeah. Yep. Uh, as for some of the others, the actual Slanesh Legion became the White Scars. Wow! Really? <laughs> the White Scars go to Slanesh? Uh, the Khan got really big off of his like own personal vanity. And, and like egotistical thing as they didn't need to go to a fulgrim anymore oh, and when you think okay. about it you know the thrill of speed is kind of a slaneshi thing you know oh, it's like that's that, true that excitement that's true. you know mm -hmm. sure sure a, a, a personal pleasure the a vanity, um if you will yeah sure we know that the ultramarines did not follow chaos but instead actually su uh, succeeded themselves and now their own little group of course um they are. Raven Guard fell to Zinch, uh, with actually Corvus Corax himself having these like haunting visions of the future, because Zinch does that to you. Yep, that that also makes sense. I, I can see the Raven Guard falling to Zinch. The Iron Hands kind of got a little fucky wucky with the Necrons, huh? Uh, which was a big part of. The reason why they turned traitor was also, I think it was it having to do with the Void Dragon on Mars, trying to get some of that tech. Because, like, you know, Ferris Manus has an iron hand. Yeah. And it is a Necron-based, like, Necrodermis kind of thing. Yeah, so when you say they got fucky-wucky with the Necrons, like, did they fight them? Or did they, what What exactly do you mean? No, trying to take and, man and get their tech, it would look like. Oh, okay. They were they were literally trying to steal their tech. It's not like they were going to war with them. They were just trying to pull like a Trazen and steal some some uh, weapons, uh, information, tech, and stuff. That or possibly colluding with them before that exact reason. Um, oh, so they were trying to align themselves. with Possibly, 
Oh, okay. okay. It, it's they got they the, the Ferris Manus one is always weird because he, he's a bizarre guy no matter in canon or not. Um, but they had near Necron stuff. But the, the Iron stuff, Iron Hands one is not very important. The interesting one I like is the the Dark Angels. Okay. Um, even in this one, the Lion is still loyal. Huh. The difference is that um, we haven't talked about Dark Angels yet. Uh, but the main thing about the Dark Angels is the Lion versus this guy called Luther, um, which is just so on the nose considering the naming sequences. Uh, the very biblical naming sequences <laughs> of the Dark Angels, along with Azrael, Belial, Ezekiel, etc. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, but uh, the main thing is that Luther and the Dark Angels fight each other. And okay. that's, the, that's why Luther and the successionist Dark Angels become the Fallen. Ah, uh, okay. That's the, the big... The big twist thing with the Dark twister. Angels. Okay. Uh, where in this timeline, Luther actually wins. And oh. he beats out the lion instead of the other way around. Which is why the lion stays loyal. He's lost. Okay. So the lion got knocked down a couple pegs. Yeah. He, he got dropped down a little bit. He's, he's like the new loyalist fallen, I suppose you could say. Okay. Um, on the now Imperial Loyalist side, you actually had the word bearers. This shouldn't surprise you at all. Lorgar became the new like ecclesiarchy. Wow, what a surprise. Who would have thought? He, he decided to go all like... He, he actually did some weird shit. Um, he, he like the Sisters of Battle don't exist in this universe. Oh, wow. You must hate this universe. Well, they were all killed by the word bearers back when they were like brides of the emperor with Ghosh Van Dyer. Oh. So, yeah, I'm not a big fan of that. <laughs> I imagine you're not a huge fan of this canon, of this uh, this this Dornian heresy anymore. Kind of shit, not going to lie. I'm not, <laughs> not happy about that one. <laughs> That sucks. <laughs> even 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 in in fake canon, Lorgar is a douche. Yep, even in fake canon, you can't like Lorgar. <laughs> um, Iron Warriors don't really change much. They're just they're still not. siege masters. They just don't have Perturabo anymore. Okay. Um, the Sons of Horus became the Black Templars. We discussed that. Uh, mm -hmm. The Emperor's children stayed with their perfectionist thing, and Fulgrim was still an awfully annoying person. Okay. Um, the Thousand Sons kind of became like the modern Grey Knights. Super high, pious, uh, like, mm. psychers, mega psyker fighting for the Imperium. Yep, that makes sense. Sure. Um, the World Eaters became a little bit less frothy and just a little bit more, like, <laughs> dour and serious. A little less frothy. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 what is what is that that clip of like is it joe rogan and the other guy and they're just like rawr, rawr. i have no idea <laughs> no idea okay i gotta look up joe rogan growling oh, i found it <laughs> i imagine it probably wouldn't be that hard to find all right, I, I'm sorry. You have to watch this now. This is this is a required clip. This is this is my new canon for world leaders. <laughs> have you ever done DMT? <laughs> yeah, that's that is definitely uh, frothy world leaders. Have you ever have you ever done DMT? Have DK. Done DMT? Nope, can't say I have. Um, the Death Guard actually became like the main part of the Inquisition, which is really bizarre. <laughs> That is super bizarre. They became the Inquisition? They, they became like the main core of it, yeah. Really wow, weird is, choice that is there. very strange. Um, Night Lords remain Night Lords. They just didn't go super over the edge, and they didn't have the problem of uh, ah, of before. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know. they, they keep it a little in check. They don't go full on, uh, we're just going to genocide you and rain bodies on your, on your sister planet. Well, I mean, yeah. I, well, well. Mm. I suppose. <laughs> I it, suppose. It depend, depends on, on the concepts we're depends going Depends on the for. crime, right? Yeah, yeah, you know. I mean, the, I mean, the custodians have the dread host, and they're like literally terror tactic custodians. 
It's true. It's all true. Right. No, it's just, it's be, okay, okay. Be warned. Be warned, citizen. Be warned, citizen. I may still skin your children. <laughs> um, the Alpha Legion are almost identical. They're just okay. They're just loyal now. They still hate the Ultramarines, just like before. They're still sneaky. They're still weird. They're just loyal. They're just okay. They they are easily the ones who needed no change. Yep. Yeah, I, that's fair. They're will, the ones that could remain sort of gray, neutral. No, DK. Sussy, no, right? you you dumbass. Yeah, they're, no, they're, no, they're gray. They're they're yeah. not gray. They're turquoise. Anyway, what's the next? What's the next thing? I I will say that the actual, like, what's the word? The document is really fascinating with the amount. It's it's definitely an old school, an old school codex style document from the way back in the days. Lots of the artwork reminds me of that. Um, I like how the battle cry for the Ultramarines is for Gilliman and the greater glory of Ultramar. <laughs> they still have not changed because they're fucking ultramarines and they're yeah of course not they're they're actually mainly fighting off the tau the ultramarines are yeah they're, they're dealing with the tau at the moment the most okay they also okay. have they also have like gundam armor hell yeah gundam armor well now now hey now i'm now i'm a little more on board they have a mark 16 damocles pattern power armor they, they, they look like they look like what tau space marines like fan art look like mm -hmm. kind of interesting looking um okay, okay. i know that they have they have uh oh that's right they have they have like what's this one the uh, word bearer says the emperor protects but we must also protect the emperor Ooh. Mm. The yeah, best, best way to get me on your side is uh big jump jets and gundam armor Fucking word bearers. The word bearers battle cry. You don't have a single fixed battle cry. Instead, an appropriate passage is chosen by the chaplain from amongst the books of Lorgar. He then leads the assembled marines in a recitation of faith before blessing them for the coming battle. Yeah. Lorgar has not changed. <laughs> nope. Lorgar is basically the same. It's just he fights for the Imperium now. He's such a. I, uh. um, the yeah, White Scars changed. still still have for the con. I must admit, there's a bit of a bizarre one for the Space Wolves. Their battle cry is for us, for skulls, for the wolf time. And I'm like, wolf time. The wolf time? It's, I, I believe it's supposed to be their final great battle mm -hmm. and to reunite the Legion. I'm imagining they treat it like Ragnarok. But. Yeah, I, I guess. The wolf so time? The wolf time? You couldn't. The wolf time? The wolf time? Maybe I'm not so sold on uh, Dorney and Heresy Space Wolves anymore. The wolf? If they're shouting for the wolf time. The wolf time. It's it, Miller time. I like how I like how the Sanguinius battle cry is for blood and for Sanguinius, and I'm like, that's not much different. No, that's about the same. That is pretty much about the same. Yep. I, I want. I I don't check the Emperor's children real quick. I want to know if the Emperor's children. Have have maintained their uh, for the emperor. <laughs> I guess they could. Either way, I mean, if they're loyalists, that works, and the, uh, if they're traitor, it also works because you know the uh, world leaders have for Angron and for the emperor. Oh, okay. okay. All right, the emperor's children one's not too bad. It's children of the emperor, death to his foes. That's, well, that's all good. right. That's, that's, that's pretty good. I like that. It's yeah. pretty good. What yeah. the what the Raven Guard? This is the last one that I'm missing here. The battle cry of the chosen role in conducting ambushes, assassinations, and covert operations. The Raven Guard referred to approach their prey silently. Instead, Legion's motto is simply Nemo me impugn less uh, Latin. Too much Latin, Latin! <laughs> Makes sense they wouldn't have much of a battle cry because they're more about uh, stealthy assassinations and such, though. The Dornian Heresy is kind of... It's, it's a neat concept. I think that the actual writing in the document does a much better justice than I can do covering it because mm -hmm. it's easy to talk just about like, here's what's different, here's the difference. But because of that, I'm always comparing it to the main thing. And when yeah. you when you read it, like it starts off interestingly because it actually starts off from the point of view of an Eldar, a dying oh. Eldar Farseer <laughs> being murdered by um, actual canon Death Guard. And they tried to go into their mind and try to find a future where this doesn't happen. 
where the Death Guard were not oh. Chaos. And they got and sucked out and they, they got what they wanted, but... A little different. So not, this is, not, yeah. You know, yeah. It's like multiverse theory in, in oh, this sense. Cool. So the Eldar got pulled into a different few, into a different timeline where the Death Guard yeah. were technically loyal. Technically, yep. Okay. Kind, of, kind of neat. That's a neat concept. That's a cool concept. I like that. Sure. There was obviously a, a, a solid amount of work that really went into this, and it's it's quite impressive. I, I'm no, I don't love it. I don't overly love it because when you're trying to change everything, some things will falter a little bit. Oh, um, sure. But it's also got a little bit of that uh, obvious fan theory jank, mm -hmm. where they're like, all right, what the Emperor did for Angron was fucking dumb. I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna fix. <laughs> we're that. gonna fix it. Yeah, yeah. Or ooh, what if Sanguinius and Kurz were reversed, kind of like how they're this in the thing? Mm -hmm. Or what if yeah. Magnus didn't get told to fuck off and ruin everything? <laughs> and it's like, all right, all right, you know? Yeah, it's pretty good. Pretty good. I mean, it sounds like an interesting concept. You know, um, I don't hate it. Uh, it's, it's, it's interesting. It's interesting to hear these fan theories, but. Uh, yeah, they do. It does seem like it kind of tends to fall into the oh, GW wrote this stupid. Let me fix it and write it the way it should have been. The way uh, a, a morally just emperor would have actually treated his sons and stuff. So yeah, yeah. I you know I I always sometimes wonder if we should get more emperor based content to maybe get some explanation on why he sucks. Mm, yeah, yeah. But no, nah, we have not yet. <laughs> not yet no no, no, no. so i mean it is it is a good concept to see how certain things go but then angron dies anyway so like shit dude yeah and, but at least he he goes out in a blaze of glory that's true you know, he, he does. doesn't he doesn't have to live suffering with the nails and everything he he gets to go out because if you're an angron fan that's probably how you want him to die in a blaze of glorious combat fighting for his brothers right so you know and he mother and he fucking killed Perturabo anyway. He <laughs> he killed Purdy anyway. What are you gonna do? Oh, god damn it! All right, all right, all right. That's all right. that's it for us there. Thank you everyone for watching. Sorry that I'm sick and sound nasally, and uh, and mm. DK is also a little under the weather as well. Yeah, Shy tried funny. to poison us, but we survived. And next episode we'll probably have a bit more energy. Hopefully. Hopefully. Unless she tries to kill us again. Which, you know, you know, best of luck. Yeah, Try. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the words of my great grandfather, who was stabbed to death by a mugger, Try me, bitch. <laughs>